So in this section, we are going to talk uh, about hints on installing cabling. You know, even if you have selected uh, the appropriate cable for your use, which is either going to be CAT 6A or CAT 6, there are still a number of mistakes that can be made. So I want to dive into that. On the unshielded twisted pair, you, the cable construction is almost always a 24 gauge American wire gauge four pair cable. Although category 6A is not 24 gauge, it's a larger conductor. And be aware, we have uh, seen counterfeit or fake cable, and we've seen this mostly in Asia. And if you just look at the cable, it says category six on the sheath of it. But when you, uh, you know, take the sheath off and look at the actual conductor that is inside, there's just no way it's a 24 gauge cable. So it's just, you know, they've cheaped out by using less copper than they should have and they sell it to you for a good price and uh, you get a cable that will not support even probably gigabit ethernet. So make sure that you buy your cable from a reputable cable supply house. Installation mistakes or installation rules. Uh, never install more than 90 meters of cable and you might say, wait, 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 you talked about 100 meters where we were talking about signaling standards. Well. Uh, 90 meters is the maximum cable that you install inside the building and then that gives you 10 meters to have patch cords that plug in uh, in the rack location at, at your network rack and at the station outlet location to connect up an access point or a computer. So uh, 90 meters maximum is, is all you should install. Uh, never allow your cable installer to unsheath more than one centimeter. Terminations should always be in jacks. Uh, I have seen uh, installations where people have a bunch of wire coming out at a network rack location and they simply crib RJ45 plugs on the end and plug it directly into the switch. Uh, that is not an appropriate way to do things. It's very difficult to label it. It's very difficult to maintain over time. And the wires themselves that you install inside of a building are solid conductor wires and if you move them a lot like you know plug and unplug them uh, the, the, the conductors will actually fail. Um, patch cords are built with stranded wire uh, but the kind of wire that you buy, bulk wire that you buy to install in, uh, in a building is solid conductor. And then uh, labeling is uh, yet uh, another thing that I see people make a lot of mistakes on. So let's take a look at these. So here's uh, some various types of UTP jacks. Uh, this happens to be the type of jack that we use uh, at the University of Oregon. We really like these. These are uh, built by a company called Panduit. Um, they are not typical. A more typical jack is this, and this is showing, uh, which is a 110 termination. The jack on the left, we were setting up to do teaching in a workshop. And uh, this was in East Africa, and we could not get one gigabit to run to the lab. Even though the switch in the rack down the hall was clearly a one gig switch, we couldn't get one gig to run out to the lab where we were going to be doing our teaching. So I just took the face plate off, the device plate, and uh, this is what we saw uh, on the left. So that's a lot more than one centimeter of unsheathed cable. Uh, and that's why it would not support uh, gigabit ethernet. Reterminating those in a proper way, like the jack on the right, uh, allowed us to get one gigabit out, out of uh, the switch. We always want to terminate cabling in jack panels. Sometimes they're called patch panels. Uh, and this is the front and the rear of a type of patch panel. And again, make sure that the jacks are properly terminated. So I've provided a little zoom in of, it's not actually this rack here, it's a different rack, but you can see again, no more than uh, one centimeter unsheathed. And this is the back of the jack panel and in the front, of course, are jacks. The labeling is super critical and the installer that installed the cable knows which cable goes where. And all you're asking to be done, because you're going to require a cable installer to test each cable to verify that it meets the performance specifications of category six or category six A, whatever you're installing. 
so they know which end of the wire is which. We want them to label it. So this is actually, I think, some terminations and some labeling that I probably personally did. You can see there's a uh, cable plugged into, you know, my guess is it's Jack 3180, even though the cable is plugged, uh, covering that up. Anybody here uh, who can guess what room that is, uh, that Jack plate is in, you know, it's pretty simple. It's room 370. Then uh, I have the picture of that Jack plate uh, on the right hand side. We have a 003E, we encode what building and what rack it is, and then you can see the outlets are labeled. So you never have to wonder where a jack is when you're standing at the network rack, and you never have to wonder uh, what jack it is uh, because it's labeled appropriately. So finally, we'll wrap this up, uh, some common unshielded twisted pair cable tools. The two on the left, are absolutely 100% required. So the tone and trace tool and the RJ11, RJ45 cable tester, those are required. Everybody should have one. If you're gonna install your own cabling, then you absolutely need a punch tool. If you make your own ethernet patch cables, you'll need the crimp tool. We don't necessarily recommend uh, crimping your own patch cables. Some people do. Uh, but again, the tone and trace and the RJ45 cable tester, everybody should have one of those. The punch down tool, probably everybody should have one of those. I would discourage you from making your own patch cords, but if you do, you need the crimp tool.